Welcome back to After Hours Riot Club Podcast. I'm your host, Davon Pondo McMillan, and this is episode four. This episode, I wanted to talk about something a little different, something super relatable, something that I feel is really important, and that's mental health, specifically for uh, creatives and entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, freelancers, um, people who are working on something in seemingly a silo sometimes. Um, Last week, this episode was supposed to air, but I got sick. And this is a podcast that I'm, you know, fully producing, hosting, editing, recording, you know, it's a solo venture. So I don't have the luxury of being able to post something or have like a co-host come up and, and support when I'm sick or, you know, checked out for the week. So we had to push it. But That being said, I'm back. I'm healthy again. Um, I'm ready to keep this ball rolling. And today we're going to talk about mental health because last week my mental health was pretty struggle. Well, my physical health was pretty struggle, but my mental health started to struggle because of that. So very first thing I wanted to speak on is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is something that is really common. I mean, I go through it all the time, not as much now as I did in the past. When I first was starting to realize I wanted to pursue a job or pursue a passion that resided in uh, creative output. For anyone that doesn't know, imposter syndrome occurs when you don't think that you deserve the praise that you might be receiving, or you just don't think you're worthy of the credit that you're being given. And you might you might feel like a fraud or that somehow people are just going to collectively all of a sudden realize you're just not that good, (laughs) like you're just shit. And you just feel like you're not worthy of any kind of appreciation, praise, or any glory towards the work that you're putting out there or the things that you're doing. And a lot of that, I mean, I go through that a lot. Um, Not as intense as it sounds. It's not like I have, you know, voices in my head screaming that I suck. But sometimes I could be like, "Uh, it's really not that good. You you can even hear it come out of yourself when someone just gives you a compliment. You know, someone's like, oh, that's really cool. And you're like, it's all right. Like, that's a sign of imposter syndrome. You know, like you're immediately lowering the worth and value that they're giving you from their perspective. And it gets super easy to have that happen when you have really high expectations on yourself. And high expectations is is not a bad thing. We all want to have high expectations, you know. You all we all want to have hold ourselves to a higher degree, you know, so we can continue growing. And in order for us to reach those expectations, we sometimes find ourselves that we have to push ourselves by saying things like "you can do better," or "you know you could have did more than that," or "you know next time." I'm going to do this different to get better results or whatever it is, how, however you're saying that to yourself in your head. But we get hyper-focused on those areas that we can improve on and lose track of the accomplishments that we've acquired thus far and the areas that we already have improved on. And we forget that this state of mind and this you know, inner monologue that we have is just a mechanism to push ourselves to grow. And it's, it's not reality. I mean, in reality, we're worthy of all that praise. In reality, we should accept it wholeheartedly because in reality, we really did overcome a situation or we really did pursue and achieve or create something that is spectacular, at least in the eyes of the person that's giving you that praise and the people that care about you or care about your work. And it's hard for us to separate ourselves from our inner monologue and take outward compliments seriously. And I think social media also like plays a role in how we view our work and how we view ourselves. And that's, you know, more to blame to, or not more to blame, but like that's a part of like comparing ourselves to other people's work, comparing our work to other people and forgetting that no people really come from that same, come from equal circumstance, you know. It's dangerous to compare yourself to people. Sometimes, I mean... I personally think that sometimes comparing yourself a little bit when you want to get like competitive, I definitely like to compete. Like I'm a super competitive person and I know there's people in my field, in my circle that 
are doing very similar things to me in very similar ways. And I like to compare work in areas to sometimes find areas that I can grow on and expand on, but I'm comparing it actively. Like I'm, I'm looking at this comparison and I see it in a way that I can actively and some most times very quickly make a change to elevate my work or to push myself, myself a little further, but just to like go on social media and search images and, you know, different things, different um, content and immediately compare it to mine is just comparing the results. You know, I don't know any of the backstory of what they've done, how they came to be, any of the workflow processes, hurdles, any of those things that they had to go through to get that thing. You know, they might have been put in a situation where it was easier for them to produce said piece or said work or whatever. And I'm not considering the journey or their circumstance. And I forget that I, you know, it's, well, me, anyone forgets that it's, Better to just focus on the stuff that you can control and focusing on that like comparison is not something you can control. You can't control their circumstance and the things that they're going through to produce their work. So just, you know, don't, you know, don't get in your head too much. And remember that, especially when you're comparing yourself, you know, to people that when you're looking back on times that you made decisions, know that you we're always making the best decision that we can based on our current mental, physical, or spiritual state. So looking back at things and saying like, oh, I should have did this different. I wish I spent more time on this. It's it's healthy to like to look at it and then make a future decision different or to use that information to benefit, you know, your present state, but to look back on it and guilt trip yourself on not making a decision at that point is kind of pointless because there's no way you could have known the outcome. You know, there's no way you could have using the resources that you had at that time. There's no way you could have made a different decision. You know, you just weren't, it wasn't meant to be. So use that as a tool to like better your future decisions. You know, that's just growth. Like that's just being human, but don't get stuck on, you know, looking back and, comparing your decision then to like the information that you have now. I think too, an important thing to kind of remember is that we're not, I heard this in another podcast, but it really resonates with me. It's like, you're not your thoughts. You're, it's essential to like, know that like your thoughts are just things. They're just like blips going through your mind. We often misstep our creative past because there's like this controlling sometimes like relentless voice in our heads saying things just actively like it's just reactive it's your brain just is reacting to things you might mean it sometimes i don't know but our brains just react to things and you don't have to act on them or like take them serious or take them as reality all the time you know and a good way to practice allowing those thoughts to kind of just pass through and not get like caught up on them is um learning to meditate practicing mindfulness um and there's cognitive behavioral therapy i don't know as much about that one but yeah speaking on which this is not going to be a consistent thing you know i think mental health is really important and especially for creatives and solopreneurs and things like that but there are tons of podcasts out there that talk about mental health and better ways to like practice mindfulness and meditate and stuff like that. And I'm certainly not an expert in in the field, but being creative and being a small business owner and someone that has been considered a workaholic at times, I definitely go through these, these things. And that's why I think it's important to talk about them today. So lastly, on the imposter syndrome, I think it's important to enjoy the creative phase that you're in. And take pride in the growth that's coming from it and don't get so lost in the result or the destination. And this is something that I I live by, you know, now more than ever. And I think it's helped me with things like imposter syndrome, just realizing that like you cannot focus too far ahead. Like if you're not enjoying the journey, then it's, it's all lost because the journey is essentially the, the entire process. Like you'll, even though I have a destination, I have a goal that I'm reaching for, 
once I reach that goal, I'm right back on the journey. So if like I'm not enjoying the journey and like, you know, the road up to that goal, then I'm, you know, missing out on 90% of the work because the destination lasts for only so long. Like once I hit it, I'm on to the next one. And it's it's essentially endless. So, you know, remember that like you're today you're better than you were yesterday, but tomorrow you're gonna be better than you are today. So yeah, like you the journey is way more important than the destination. The destination is important too. You should have goals, you should have milestones, you should be reaching for something, but don't lose track of yourself where you are at that current moment. Like take pride in that. Another one, another thing that's pretty common. This is super common for me. I mean, all of these are really common for me, to be honest. But we all go through burnout. It really fucking sucks. Like, burnout is like one of the worst fucking feelings ever. So, I mean, especially when you're a solopreneur and in a creative field, you know, you get into this super insane like cycle of working nonstop. And I'm, I can only speak on what I've experienced, but it happens often it's partly because it's something that you enjoy. Like I enjoy creating and designing and making work. It's something I'm passionate about. So it doesn't really feel like work sometimes. That could be dangerous, you know, especially when your income and your stability is supported by it. So now now you're, you're kind of blinded by the fact that like, it doesn't feel like work. So you feel your work and play is getting a little bit jumbled, but now you have this really real fear of, if you take a break, you might lose everything tomorrow. Like you might lose the, you know, blessing or or ability to work on something you're so passionate about because you just might be out of money. Like you, you might be broke tomorrow and you got to go find that nine to five again or you got to go hustle or do whatever you got to do, you know, and you can't afford to turn down incoming work either or stop working at all through just that same fear of losing it all. So you keep driving yourself, driving yourself harder and harder and all of that is just compounding stress. And some stress is good. Don't get me wrong. Not all stress is bad. There's a difference between you stress and distress. Stress that results in burnout is distress. It's bad stress. It's shitty stress. You know, like it's the stress that is followed by anxiety and depression, especially when you're self-employed and you're naturally a workaholic, you forget sometimes to take a breath. And luckily, I have friends and family members who help remind me frequently, like my girlfriend, my mom, homies. Um, they can quickly identify when I'm not healthy and like I need to take a break. I need to cool it. But you, I can help identify or I can also can identify when I'm coming up to like burnout when I find myself just like consecutively coming up blank creatively and consistently like having like headaches or fogginess or fatigue or anything like that. And the excitement that I get like when I create something is like kind of losing its appeal. That happens a lot too when I just get like a lot of client work. And I love getting paid for client work. I love working with new clients, getting to touch on other people's dreams and ideas and passions. But client work can sometimes suck. And that's okay. I mean, like I said, it's work. It doesn't have to be, you know, 100% of the time what I want to do. Sometimes I got to do, you know, a little bit of the other stuff, but at least it's still creative work. And that's the beauty of it for me. But that can add to burnout because I'm starting to now, you know, have all these outside things coming to my workflow, all this like outside energy coming into my workflow. I know that I'm stressed about meeting a deadline or getting paid for something or having too many clients at one time. You know, now I kind of have the ability to turn down some clients and I know that how my workflow, I've been doing this long enough that I know how my workflow works and how long it takes me to do something so I can plan accordingly. But if you ever find yourself in this state and you find that you're burnt out, first thing you should do is get the fuck up and walk away from what you're doing and do something non-work related, like completely different. And I know that sounds like horrible, especially if you're listening to this and you're like, but I need to do this. I have to do this. This is coming up. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck that, dude. Like, just get up and go do something else. Or don't do anything at all. Take a fucking nap. You have to give 
your brain a time to like recoup. Our brains are muscles and if we're not giving it time to recover, we can't expect it to perform at its best ability. You know, it's just like if you're an athlete, like if you were if you were sore and like are dealing with an injury, your coach or your or whoever is not going to expect you to go out and perform because they know that if you go out and perform at, you know, half full, if you're performing at 25% proficiency, then 100% of your work is going to be half ass. So they would rather you take the time to hit 100% proficiency so you can get out there and deliver 100% work and not deliver some bullshit. So give yourself that time to recoup so that you can get back in there with the tank full and deliver your best your best work and your best ability. And you'll find that like once you take that break, the work will go faster. So if you think you're losing time by taking a break and giving yourself time, you're actually in my head. This is how I, you know, I justify it, but you're actually getting that time right back because everything's running way smoother now. So you're actually working faster than you were before. And that's just how it is. So take the break, give yourself time, go outside for a walk. I find that if I just like hit the gym or go on a hike or go to my local cafe, go to a bar, get some drinks with homies, I actually come back flowing with ideas. Like I can, I frequently just go and keep a list in my phone. Sometimes I'll take like a sketchbook or something like that. And like when I'm out doing things, I just write all the ideas that are coming to me down because I don't, when I'm working, when I'm like executing on stuff, I almost never get ideas. Like I can't just stare at a canvas and like expect to deliver some kind of idea. I keep that list so when I come back to actually work, I have ideas already. I It's like I'm picking up the book and starting off where my bookmark is. I'm not just starting from the beginning every single time. So that's just a tip. I think it's it helps me a lot. It's extremely beneficial. As far as burnout goes, take breaks, keep notes, and... Yeah, just take care of yourself. I know it seems easier said than done, but just keep it, you know, write a post-it note somewhere that says, take a break, (laughs) whatever you got to do. Because, yeah, your mental health is super important. Lastly, and this is on the flip side of, I guess, issues or things that can come from being stressed or distressed, finding the zone. I think I mentioned this earlier. Maybe I've mentioned it in other podcasts. Being in the zone or, like, finding a flow state can honestly be like the best thing that can happen to you and when you're creative and it's you can't find yourself in the zone if you're burnt out they don't exist in tandem so but once you if you go take that break and you come back and you start to work you you might find it you just you hit this point where time just kind of disappears and everything feels right like you're making decisions quickly and correctly and you just feel like you're in complete control of everything and it happens more for some than others, but there's some huge factors that can help you reach that point, you know? So those things that we talked about earlier about like keeping a notepad of ideas, making sure you're giving yourself a break away from work outside of your studio, like doing something that is non-work related and just giving yourself something that's actually challenging. Like you got to work with something. If it's too easy, you're not going to find yourself in a zone. You have to ask your brain to like focus intently and you can't be struggling for ideas. And then once you're hitting all those points, you'll find that you'll just naturally get into the zone once you're working on something for an extended period of time. And like when I used to work at nine to five, I would never find myself hitting any any states of flow. I was distracted so easily, dude. Like I, I would get distracted over anything. I mean, that's because I really didn't get much enjoyment out of it. It was just me surviving. You know, it was me like getting money to pay bills, like we all do. There was very little passion to be had in the work I was doing at uh, nine to fives. Like I still took my job seriously, and I still produced quality work, but I was so easily distracted because I was either stressed not challenged or wasn't generating my own ideas. But if you're working on something that, like I said, is challenging, enjoying, and requires enough time for you to like actually get your mind to focus on it, you'll find yourself in the zone in no time. Turn some tunes on, listen to a podcast, listen to my podcast, and get to work. And boom, you're in it. I think there was um, Soul. There was a movie Disney made called Soul. And 
this movie was sick because it was the first time I seen a movie like talk about the zone and like flow states and stuff like that. And I definitely recommend watching it. I mean, I think it was a couple years ago it came out. I think it might have come out COVID time, which was weird. Nonetheless, that movie's fucking sick. You should give it a watch if you've never watched it. it talks about all this stuff. It probably does a better better job at explaining this stuff than I am. But if you have any questions or know of any other um, mental health things that are highly relatable to creatives and solopreneurs and freelancers, designers, musicians, whatever, please make sure to mention them in the comments. Give me a shout out on Instagram. And yeah, thanks for stopping by for another episode. This next episode coming up next week is going to be the first episode that I have a guest on. So definitely tune into that. And yeah, I appreciate all the support so far. Uh, all the subscribers on Spotify. I appreciate you guys. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Take fucking breaks. Take a nap. Keep your creative fuel tip top. Yeah, and that's it for today's show. I'll catch you guys next week. Catch you then.